Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Professor, a crowd-driven, crowd-funded feature where we respond to your questions and comments on everything from culture to economics, geopolitics, history, all the things that matter to us in our life together as citizens. And today's question comes from Brian, and it has a commendably concise quality. He says, can you explain cultural Marxism? And the answer is yes, I can, not in a favorable way. And I mean that in this case in a twofold sense. First of all, I'm against cultural Marxism. But secondly, I'm uneasy with this label. It is essentially the idea that Marxism, which was once fundamentally an economic doctrine that sought to inspire the workers to revolt against their capitalist oppressors, realized at a certain point, Marxists did, that much as they hated society, this revolt wasn't going to happen because contrary to Marx's prediction, capitalism was making the workers better off materially. Which would have been a good reason to discard Marxism because Marx's iron logic says it can't happen and yet it very obviously did. So the idea goes that the cultural Marxists decided instead to revolutionize the ruling class, to make this long march through the institutions, to turn the professoriate and the politicians and the journalists and the literary types into radicals. And if you look at this as a tactical matter, I think it's fair to say that they have succeeded. I think you find that the elite is considerably to the left of the average person on a whole lot of issues these days, which is weird. Uh, note in passing, by the way, the whole idea that Marxists had to inspire the working class to revolt was also weird since Marx said the whole thing was inevitable, mechanistic, deterministic, and would arise from the, their circumstances. It didn't make any sense to talk about it, but that's you know the problem with all deterministic theories, of which Marxism is just one particularly angrily odious variety. But the reason I don't like the term cultural Marxism, though you hear it a good deal, I think I've even heard Jordan Peterson use it then not in the habit of picking fights with Jordan Peterson, not that he's likely to watch this video, but if you are, I would ask you to consider this. To call contemporary radicalism, which is obsessed with matters of sex and identity, and is truly postmodern in its contempt for truth, except as a weapon to say, this is my truth, bonk, which is not really something you do with truth so much as with a good hard stick, is to imply that somehow Marxism is the original template of radicalism, and that therefore, any form of radicalism is necessarily a subspecies of Marxism. And I just think that's wrong. I think there is such a thing as radicalism. I think it has certain characteristic features, uh, far too much emphasis on intentions and far too little on methods, an inclination towards conspiratorial thinking, uh, tendency to turn personal defects into public virtues, or at least to try to. Uh, Thomas Sowell's A Conflict of Visions is very good on this kind of thing, in my view. But Marx didn't invent radicalism. Marx isn't the primal radical, the teacher at whose feet all the others sit. He's just one particular kind of radical, egregious personally, as well as in his thinking, catastrophic in his consequences. Yes, there are many things one can say about Karl Marx, and almost all of them are bad, without being in any way unjustified or even unfair. But the problem is radicalism. A radicalism with far deeper roots than a 19th century labor theory of value German theorist. So what we have today in the academy isn't cultural Marxism, it's cultural radicalism. It is, has left its Marxist roots, or well, if it had any, maybe some of these people were once Marxists, but the Marxist influences on it are relatively minor and it doesn't, I should, I correct myself, it doesn't have Marxist roots. It has these far older impulses, including in the desire to eat the apple and become as gods, to make our own moral law, to redefine truth in our image, instead of accepting the universe as it is, admitting our imperfections, and doing our best to be worthy of a higher standard than any that we personally create. So yes, there's an enormous amount of radicalism out there. We live in a kind of upside-down world. It used to be that the elite liked things the way they were, and the populace grumbled, at least some of them did. Nowadays, you know, the populace is far more likely to say, can we please have it back? And the elite to say, oh, no, 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 no. We must overthrow the established order. They're pretty confident they can ride the wave and maybe even they're right. But this kind of radicalism, whatever it may be, and however much Marxism may have appealed to privileged people you'd expect would, if everything's determinist, align with the ideology of the ruling class, this radicalism is something far deeper than Marxism. It's not an offshoot of it. It's not a species of it. So yes, be very worried about cultural radicalism and its contemptuous attitude toward truth. But 
don't waste too much of your intellectual or rhetorical ammunition denouncing it as Marxism. It, it, it sounds weird, and it doesn't sound weird entirely because people are confused. It sounds weird because this is not Marxism. This is radicalism. It is, Marxism was a kind of radicalism, but this is primarily a very different kind. And the problem isn't Marx. The problem is radicalism and this impulse to dethrone God and sit in his chair, a task we are not suited to perform or capable of. If you're enjoying Ask the Professor and you'd like to submit a question or a comment, this URL will take you to the right spot on my website. And if you want to support this and my other work, click here and become a one-time or monthly sponsor. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.